Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about the increasing level of trade between Russia and one of the newest members of BRICS who joined on January the 24th. 2024. It's been announced that Russia's trade with the United Arab Emirates has tripled over the last three years. The UEA has become the largest trading partner of Russia within the Arab world. Now what factors have contributed to this increase in trade and how have the sanctions affected this growth? Also, what role has Abu Dhabi played in all this? Well, a meeting with the UEA President Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan the Russian President Vladimir Putin revealed that trade turnover between Russia and the United Arab Emirates has tripled over the past three years. But in fact, if you go back a bit further, since 2018, there's actually been a five-fold increase in trade. And it's now gone from 2.5 billion back then to nearly 12 billion. Now, the UEA is now Russia's most significant partner in that part of the world, the Middle East. Now it's worth noting that these figures do not take into account the billions of dollars worth of Russian gold that's imported then exported by the Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange. Now some of you might remember the London Bullion Markets Association took away Russia's gold delivery status and suspended the Russian miners' uh, membership of the organisation and their export of gold to London. So the Russians started to use Dubai and the Shanghai exchanges in China for the facilitation of the export of their gold. Now it's worth bearing in mind that Russia exports gold around $25 billion worth as it's the second largest gold producer in the world. So yet another misstep by the idiots in the UK. Now President Putin also noted that Mutual investments between Russia and the UAE have reached 7 billion with approximately 60 projects valued at a total of 2 billion currently underway through their respective sovereign investment funds. Now the UEA leader indicated his willingness to take steps further to expand trade with Russia. He said, in fact, the level of cooperation of the countries is relatively modest in comparison with what it could be. He said there's currently limited activity in the energy sector with few projects being implemented. I mean, UEA companies have not made significant investments in Russian share packages of oil or gas, etc. For instance, Rosneft does have a 10% share by the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Qatar, while Novatech has a package owned by Dubai Energy. But there's been no collaboration with the UEA on the Arctic shelf that's according, that's according to Igor Yuskov of the National Energy Security Fund. Now before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and the website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. Now you can do this by making a small donation which is done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody donates does get a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all now just for watching because every viewer is important. Now some time ago one of the first significant projects in the energy sector was the construction of a gas pipeline to pump natural gas from Qatar to the UEA and Oman. Now, the project was completed in 2010 by Stroy Transgas in collaboration with Dolphin Energy which is an Emirati company. Now, while the Arab world is strong in oil sector, there's a clear need for assistance in the gas sector, well, apart from Qatar, of course. Now, in 2015, Ross Atoms started to supply nuclear fuel to the Barach nuclear power plant in the UEA under a 15-year agreement. That was the first contract for the supply of nuclear fuel to the Gulf states. Now, in 2018, the Emirati company acquired a 44% stake in Gazprom Neft in Novostok and is investing in several oil fields in the Tomsk and Omsk regions of Russia. That's in Siberia, by the way. Plus, in 2021, a memorandum of understanding was signed at ministerial level in the field of hydrogen technologies, including the production of equipment for its production. Plus, the two parties collaborate in the aerospace sector, with the UAE having already launched its satellites from the Russian Vostokny Cosmodrome. Now currently Russia exports more to the UEA than it imports. 
Now, Russia supplies a wide range of intermediate products. They range from rare earth metals, wood, grain, mainly wheats of course, uh, flour, various types of steel, glass and other commodities. Plus, you'd be surprised that Russia actually sends a, a range of vegetables, various food products, plus chemicals and plastics. There's also a growing trend in the export of machinery and tools to the UAE, but their uh, levels are not that significant. Now, like from across the globe, the UAE is a popular destination for Russian tourists. And that's according to Ekaterina Novakova, who's a professor of economic theory at the Plenkinov School of Economics. But that, since 2022, there's been a notable increase in the trade due to the emergence of Russian oil products on the global market. <clears throat> I mean, Russia's primary export to the UAE is fuel oil rather than diesel. And it's worth noting that the UAE and Saudi Arabia still utilise fuel oil and on occasions even crude oil as a source of producing electric power in their power stations. Abu Dhabi still utilises power plants that run on liquid fuel oil, despite the global shift away from this technology due to its high cost. However, the UAE is in a position to do this given the low cost of production of its oil. Now, this has pro prompted a surge in the purchases of Russian oil products, which has the effect of releasing the UAE's own oil resources. I mean, they purchase Russian oil products at a discounted rate and sell their oil at the market prices and they generate a profit. I mean, since 2022, a new point of contact between Russia and the UAE has emerged. Many companies in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, are engaged in parallel imports and other operations, including trading. I mean, the UAE is now a hub for companies in managing, owning, are just kind of involved in the Russian shadow fleet that's avoiding Western sanctions. Now, the same is true for the LNG shadow fleet that's currently being put together. Well, it's actually together already. And they choose the UAE as a place to register their companies. I mean, traders not only trade oil and oil products, but they provide an intermediate range of financial services to Russian exporters and importers. I mean, Russia uses the DRAM, currency of the European Emirates, for both domestic and international transactions. This is beneficial because not only does it <coughs> allow Russian oil to reach the oil market via the United Arab Emirates, but also other goods are exported and imported in and out of it. Consequently, the DRAMs received for oil can be spent in a variety of ways that benefit the Russian economy. I mean, the exporters and importers have established a point of contact through the use of the UEA currency and it facilitates the trade. Now, regarding future collaboration, it's likely to be a, a focus on energy. I mean, many countries are obviously are part of OPEC and uh, plus and the long term plans to diversify their energy sources. So the potential projects in solar power and hydrogen energy. Now, according to Natalia Milakova, who's an analyst at Freedom of Fights Global, she says that that's a possibility, but I don't, she doesn't anticipate any significant construction projects in the hydrogen sector at this time. Instead, there's a focus on scientific collaboration, research initiatives, and technological advancements. Well, there may be potential for mutual supply agreements, but Neither the Russian or the UEA has a clear immediate need to establish hydrogen engines, technology or whatever. And that's despite the European Union's ambition to establish hydrogen as a global energy storage system. And the, rel the industry still remains relatively modest in scale. And it's, plusly, it's closely related to industries such as metallurgy. Now, in conclusion, the primary conduit for interaction between Russia and, and the UAE is the OPEC Plus agreement on the oil and uh, volume of oil and production, the fulfilment of quotas. I mean, the U United Arab Emirates has always fulfilled its quota acts, uh, obligations, and it's while Russia's periodically exceeded these quotas, but they've put, put them back into steps to reduce production volumes. So there are really not going to be too many problems. I mean, there's, so the trade between Russia and the UAE is only going to continue and it's also going to be a commerce hub that will allow Russia to 
trade throughout the Middle East and the, the whole wider area into Africa, etc. So it's all looking pretty good for uh, trade between the BRICS members. Now, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel by clicking on the thanks button. Don't forget the comments section. I love the comments. I love reading them and I love responding to them. Thank you and I'll see you all again soon.